So today seems to be the day of the large rock shelters. They're like everywhere. I mean, could you imagine back before civilization exists as we know it? I mean, those would probably be your home. I think uh, yesterday's trail log ended up being, uh... oh wow, there's a cave. They got it blocked off. See the bars? So yesterday's trail log, um, I did around 19 GPS miles. I never did figure out what it was point to point. Probably around 15-ish. Ended up camping right next to a stream, built a fire because I'd saw quite a bit of bear scat. Plus I had that run in with a bear yesterday. Um, I was super tired, but I made it a few miles farther than the church which is where I was originally going to camp and get water at. I ended up going a little farther just because I'm still trying to make up the miles I missed from my four zero days due to my leg injury. Um, today is supposed to be, according to the trail notes, uh, today is supposed to be a relatively easy day with uh, some miles of road walkage on, uh, I don't know if that's State Route 700 or Route 700 or Highway 700, but either way. I don't know how long it is till I get there. It's supposed to be plenty of water along the way, and so far that has been the case. I am so thankful for that. That means that, uh, that I have less to carry. These rocks are slicker than snot. <clears throat> Every one of these streams is like it. Um, I've got Brooks Cascadia on which stick to rocks normally, but uh, every stream I've crossed has been super slippery. Kind of like a slime on the rocks, uh, mold and algae and stuff. So here's a hiker tip. Um, the way that I carry my water is, so that I don't have to carry as much. Um, I don't fill my bladder all the way full. I put like a liter of water in the bladder and then I carry a smart water bottle either half or all the way full. Now when, when I'm short on water I keep the smart water bottle clear full so I have a full liter backup. And when I have plenty of water I only keep a half full. And what this does is I know that I can go about four hours on one liter of water on average. Temperatures the way they are right now. Uh, less time than that if it's hotter outside. So above low to mid 80s, reduce that by half. So two hours for a liter. But uh, so anyways, the reason why I do that is when I run out of water in my bladder, I can filter the water that's in the smart water bottle and then that gives me some time to find water and it's very efficient that way um, that means you don't have to carry more than you need you know if if I'm carrying a full liter of water and the temperatures are in the 70s in the smart water bottle I've got you know four hours to find another water source and if it's half full I got two hours so uh, that's kind of hiker tip I've been thinking about putting together these hiker tips. They'll probably be separate than the video. Some kind of noise up in here. Uh, so 
I'll probably include this in the Shatoi video, but I'm also going to start a section of hiker tips. So, this is apparently known as Graffiti Rock, unfortunately. You can see it in the pictures, but not... <sighs> Might be able to see it in the video, I couldn't just zoom in though. Man, I got all excited when the uh, trail guide said there was a cave with the stream coming out of it. And then, of course, it's blocked off. I uh, kind of feel like they rolled out the red carpet for me here. This is a huge improvement, by the way. This is the second bridge like this that I've run across. And this helps tremendously. Uh, less erosion on the banks. Uh, keeps hikers from getting their feet soaked which isn't necessarily a bad thing in the uh, summertime six twenty four hmm I'm not sure which way I'm supposed to go Let's get over here and see. This says 4-H Camp Barren Fork. Well, let me get the trail guide out and let's see what it says.
Well, it says Cross Creek and way downstream to the right should find Trail 100 around Bend. So I'm guessing I'm supposed to go to the right. Also, those rocks right there tell me that this way is likely the path most traveled. Notice there's no stones going this way to cross this. So I'm going to guess that we're supposed to go this way. Let's walk up here a little ways and see. Actually, I see a marker right there, a blaze. Uh, on this tree. Ooh. Get up here where you can see it. Can you see it? It's the sun washing it out right there. So, uh, and we're off. There's actually been a couple areas like this. I've just, uh, I keep getting uh, sidetracked. Blue downs and things make it look like you're going the wrong way. Huh. And, uh, it actually said, the bear track, it actually said in the uh, trail notes that this was kind of a difficult section of the trail very confusing there's been some reroutes and things horse hooves also so uh i guess that's contributing to it overall uh, you can't really see i'm gonna jump off here try to make up some time So I kept seeing this inter crevice in the uh, trail guide and uh, wasn't really sure what that meant, but now I guess we know. Oh, this is actually kind of hard, it's kind of slick. With the angle of the wall. So excuse the shaky camera. Hold on just a minute while I step down to dry. There we go. Well, that was kind of cool. I wonder how far I'm supposed to follow it up. See if my tracking skills can help me out here. I still see worn rock. Actually, I believe I see a trail marker up there. Oh well. I am now down on a Chateauwe next to the Cumberland, right off of, um, wow, hold on. Can't remember what it's called now. Get the trail notes out. Right off of Thunderstruck Road, Thunderstruck Road. 
So I'm at about 59, 27, somewhere around there, 59, 27. Today has been a kind of horrible day. Uh, fighting with all of the uh, weeds, taller than I was, between Canton Road and State Route 700 or whatever Route 700. Man, it took forever to get through there. Then, uh, the three and a half or four miles of asphalt road mileage to get up to Slaughter Road or Thunder, whatever road. Mm. Let me shut this camera off so I can keep going.